Good morning, everyone. So I hope everybody had a wonderful Shabbos and we're ready already. And um, today we're going to be looking at Perek Sadiches, chapter 98 of Tehillim. And these chapters of Tehillim are very apropos um, that every chapter really speaks to us in our everyday situation. Today's chapter starts off with the words Mizmar Shiru Lahashem Shir Chadash Ki Niflaos Asa Hoshia Lo Yamino Uzuroa Kadshai. A song, sing to the Lord, he performs wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have saved him. So this Tehillim, this chapter of Psalms, which was written by David HaMelech, by King David, as was the previous Psalms that we're looking at the, um, at the future, the era of Mashiach. And so... We say that when Mashiach is going to Hashem, a new song. I just need to. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this new song. So the first thing that's interesting to note is that this new song that we talk about is called Shir Chadash. It's a new song. And it is expressed in the man about this before in the past. Um, but we're going to pause to re-examine this idea. Sometimes we'll talk about a song being a feminine song, like Shira Chadasha, a new song. Um, one of the prayers we say every day is the song that the Jews and um, we see over there that it says Shira Chadasha, a new song in the feminine. Here, when we talk about the new song in the era of Mashiach, we talk about a song that is expressed in the masculine Shir Chadash. Um, so. Why, when it comes to the era of Mashiach, is the song that we're going to be singing a Shir Chadash, a new song in the masculine, that we left Mitzrayim, we left Egypt. We have had many occasions to sing songs. Hashem has been good to us. Hashem has saved us. We are here thousands of years into Golas, into exile. We are still Am Yisrael a nation studying Torah, the laws of the Torah. So we have seen many, many salvations of Hashem. And this is exactly the point, that each salvation brings with it the birth of a new era. And ultimately, that era of security and safety becomes another time where we need Hashem's salvation. So when we call the song Shira Chadasha, it's a new song that is sung to express thanks to God. Yet we also know that until Mashiach comes, until the future where we're going to have the final redemption, each song because a new necessity for the salvation of Hashem is going to be when the sheikh is going to come, then it's going to be, to be a new song in the masculine because then there will be no necessity anymore for there to be an opportunity of salvation. Um, so that's why over here it's called Shir Chadash because we are talking about the future where we will not need saving ever again. 
This will be a redemption that will be everlasting. It's also the, um, that masculine is used to denote the idea of physical strength. And uh, when a song is sung, Shir Chadash, in the masculine, it will be with great strength. Earlier, I mentioned in our davening the song of the sea. And that song was a song that was expressed in the feminine, Shira Chadasha. It was a new song for the new miracles that had happened, the exodus, the splitting of the sea. But yet, in the feminine, it denotes that there was an area of weakness in the... When did they sing the song? They sang the song after the miracle. God took them into, uh, into the desert, but they didn't sing the song until after the sea had split and they saw that the Egyptians had drowned. That was B'nai Israel as a whole. We know that at that time, the women did not display this lack of emuna, this lack of faith, and this lack of trust in Hashem. How so? How do we know that the women did not lack that faith and that the way that the, uh, the idea, the concept of the masculine with great strength and great betachan, great faith in Hashem? Because following on from the song that the Jewish nation sang with Moshe Rabbeinu, then it says... Vatikach Miriam Hanavia, that Miriam, all the women that were with, that were there, took instruments and sang and danced to Hashem. So we see something very interesting. The Jews had left Mitzrayim, they had left Egypt, and opportunity to sing praises to God, to thank Hashem for this amazing miracle that nobody could ever have imagined would have taken place. And yet the women, every single one of them, had an instrument ready to celebrate, not just with song, but also with music and with dance. How is that possible? There was no uh, Samash or any other kind of music store in the desert. In fact, there were no provisions in the desert. We were totally reliant on Hashem, which we always are, but in the desert, we actually realize that. And yet, every single Jewish woman had an instrument. And the reason that every Jewish woman had an instrument left Egypt. The Jewish women were certain, they knew, that Hashem was going to perform amazing miracles for them. And therefore, every single woman had their musical instrument, had their tambourine. And when it came time to dance and to sing this new song, the women were adequately equipped. So uh, I want to um, just give a little... Uh, sure that all of us have our instruments ready to sing and to dance our Sheikh Chadash, our new song. Um, you can get your instruments on, uh, on Amazon still. If you don't have anything left at home, you gave them all away to other people to use. So we should really follow the lead of these Jewish women. You know, the Zohar says that the souls of the Jews that left Mitzrayim, that left Egypt. So we have within our DNA this great betachan, this great faith that we are going to witness and see unbelievable of the year as we are leaving the month of Adar, the month of Simcha and joy and going into the month of Nisan. 
um, where we will all emit Hashem, sit down. We mention this at the Seder. What do we say? We say at the Seder, in our praises to Hashem, we say, that we are going to sing <coughs> and give thanks to Hashem with Shir Chadash, with a new song because of our Okay, so um, once again, we're going to see as Micha, the prophet, promises and prophesies that um, Hashem is going to perform miracles, just like the days where we are, us, I will show great miracles and wonders. And that is... Um, that is something that we need to be ready to sing this new song when these new miracles happen. Continues. So it says, sing the Lord a new song, for he performed wonders. His right hand have saved him. From these words, we can see that is in Golos. God is in exile. We see this because it says that his right hand and his holy arm have saved him. That God is in Golos, is in exile with us, and he too is going to leave exile with us. And the idea of Yamino, his right hand, Hashem is going to perform unbelievable miracles when he takes us out of Golis, when he takes us out of, out of Egypt. So it's important when we say Egypt, we're talking about our personal Egypt, uh, our bondage, our slavery, our exile that we find ourselves in now. And what's that idea? That God being hidden. And, um, and darkness, being in a, narrow, in a narrow place. So let's be ready. And let's, so um, one thing we can do, like I mentioned, is make sure we have our musical instruments ready to play and sing. And as I've mentioned several times, also to learn about the era of Mashiach. Um, let's go to Pasuk base, verse number two. Hodia Hashem Yeshua. So the Lord has made known his salvation. Le'ene Hagayim Gila Sitgan. He has revealed his, his righteousness. So Mashiach is coming for the entire world. The coming of Mashiach. Mashiach is not something that's happening just for the Jewish nation. Hodia Hashem Yeshua God will make known his salvation. Le'ene Hagoyim Gila. To the eyes of the nation. Sid Kasai. He has revealed. So what is it that is going to be revealed? So... What's going to be revealed is the chesed of Hashem, the kindness of Hashem. As we are in Golas, is in a hidden state. It's not necessarily perceived. Mashiach is the concept of revelation. Revelation of God, who is kind and does kindness and performs kindness. And that is going to be Mashiach in the days of Mashiach. He remained to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Zocha chasto kindness that he had promised in his faithfulness towards B'nai Yisrael 
And um, we know that when we're talking about the promise of the redemption, as I mentioned already, the merit of the Jewish women. When it's difficult and times are dark and we can't actually imagine about, we have to remember that it's our faith in Hashem. We need to live with that knowledge that God is with us and God is going to take us out of this dark and bitter exile. And it's going to happen very soon. So we've really got to remain strong. We've got to keep our heads up high, even when it's difficult. Um, all of you who are watching now are already taking a proactive step. Learning Torah gives us strength, our strength. And um, we've got to keep positive because we are so... What does it mean, Zohar Chastai? He recalls, like we said, Hashem is kindness. And, um, and therefore, he will always go back to that place of... Therefore, we continue, Pasuk Dalet, verse number four. Hariu lahashem kol ha'aretz, pitzchu v'rananu v'zameru. Praises and play music. So here we're talking again. What kind of song is it? It's a song that is in the masculine form. It's a song of strength. We're not waiting to see miracles are about to be revealed. And therefore, not just should we sing, but it says, Hariu la Hashem, shout to Hashem. All praises and play music. So when you finish watching this, uh, learning this chapter, this parak of, of Psalms, take some time to put on the music, dance and sing in jubilation in anticipation of these great miracles that right now we do not see, we cannot see them, but we have, we have bitochan, we have trust and bitochan is something Trust is something based on the past. The fact that we are still here today is only because of something that is miraculous. Because of the miracles that Hashem has performed for us in the past. And therefore, the faith that we are being asked to have. It is a faith based on performance. God has been there for us in the past. The fact that we are here today doesn't make any sense. It's, uh, it, it, it's, got, it's got no uh, no natural reason that we should. Yet, here we are. We're here today. And actually, if we go back to the first verse where we talked about the kind of song that we're singing over here, it's called a Sheh Chodosh. It's called a new song. Now, there's a very famous teaching in the Torah from Shlomo HaMelech that Ein Chodosh Tachas HaShemesh. There is nothing new under the sun. And yet, here, we are talking about singing a Sheikh song. Why are we singing a new song? Because we are going to see new wonders, new miracles. So isn't that a contradiction? Tachas Hashemesh. There is nothing new under the sun. And that exact the point is, Ein Chodosh, there's nothing new. Tachas Hashemesh. Under the sun, meaning in nature, everything was revealed. Everything was put into place with its potential. So in terms of that, Ein Chodosh, there is nothing new. But we B'nai Israel, we the Jewish nation, 
the children of Hashem, the children of God, we know that we, when we connect to Hashem, God is nature. God is nature. But God is above nature. And when we say, En Chodesh Tachas Hashemesh, yes, through natural anything new but in the realms of godliness in the realms of Ein Sof, in the realms where there's infinity and that is Hashem so then we are going to see unbelievable miracles and that will give rise to sheer Chadash because it's going to be a new experience experience that has never been had is going to be a sheer chadash, it's going to be a new song. But remember, we said that sheer chadash denotes the concept of physical strength. And the physical strength translated into a song is a song that we sing now, even before we are realizing the great wonders and the great miracles that are going to be. And when that happens, the whole world, the entire new songs, every person is going to turn to the next person. The Radak says, each one is going to say, sing a new song, make up a new melody, make up a new verse, make up a new stanza. Look what's going on. Sing this. Zamru Pasukhe, verse number five. The Kol Zimra. Play to the Lord with a harp with a harp and a voice of song. And what's going to be at that time? Bechat Soisrois, the call of the shofar, Horiu Lifnei HaMelech Hashem. Raise your voices before the King, the Lord. When something of great importance is how to get, get blown. So, the call shofar with trumpets and the, and the sound of the shofar, the setting is going to be in place for all of us that, that this special moment where Hashem is revealing himself in this world, everybody is going to experience the and presence of Hashem and that automatically is going to give rise to everybody singing not only sing and if we move on to verse 7 we're going to see also Yiram Hayam Umaloa the sea and the fullness thereof will roar Tevel the Yoshve Bar the inhabited world and the inhabitants thereof. Not only are human beings going to sing, not only are people going to sing, but the sages tell us that when Mashiach reveals himself, and we mentioned this in the previous chapter as well, that uh, that nature is going to sing, going to sing, and the, 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 the zodiac and the, the sea, why are they going to sing? As long as we're in Golos, as long as we are in exile, everybody has free choice to choose to worship Hashem, to worship one God, or to give our, our sustenance and our life force to other things. And sometimes a person can choose to know that there is a God, to know that there is Hashem, and at the same time also just to be on the safe side. Well, when Mashiach is going to come, this doubt is going to completely disappear and a miracle is going to happen and Hashem is going to give a life force in nature so that they themselves will proclaim Hashem Echad, and his name is one. Everybody is going to recognize. And that's the meaning when it says the sea and the fullness 
thereof will rule the inhabited world and inhabitants thereof. And it continues in Pasuk Ches, in verse number 8. Naharos yimcha uchaf yachad harim yorayim. Hands together, mountains will sing praises. What does it mean, rivers? will clap hands. So Rashi tells us the prophet spoke in a language that the ear can hear, not that the rivers have a hand, but it's an expression of joy and gladness about something. They put their hands together and they express great joy and, and gladness. Express this joy and gladness. Lifnei Hashem, before the Lord, kiva lishpot haaretz, for he has come to judge the earth, yishpot tebel betzedek, created world justly, ve'amim b'meisharim, and the peoples with equity. When Mashiach comes, when God is revealed in this world, this is exactly the revelation is going to be the judgment. We live in a time of darkness where justice is a million dollar question. Why do wicked people prosper? Why do good people suffer? And as long as we have these questions, that is the concept of God being in exile. Hashem created this world. Why did he create this world? He created this world because he wanted to have a dwelling place in the physical world. And what does that mean? That means that he created this magnificent world with all its beauty and everything that he created is there, is here, for the glory of Hashem, for the glory of God. And then the last thing he created was, and Hashem said, you are going to be my partners in this creation of the world. You're going to finish this job for me. You're going to be my interior designers. You're going to make this world a place that I am comfortable to dwell in. What does that mean? We're going to make this world a place where God is revealed. How do we do this? We do this by recognizing that the world and all that is in it is here for the glory of Hashem. And we use everything that God has given to us to reveal him. Meaning, we are here to perform mitzvahs to carry out the commandments of the Torah. And the mitzvahs are all commandments to do actions. When we do an action, when we take a physical object, so for example, now we're using technology to study ways of revealing God in this world. And we're using books made of paper, so all the trees, that were used to create this paper and the factories and the printing houses. We're using all of these things to bring and to reveal what is happening is that we are making this world a place where Hashem's light is revealed. And that is where God wants to reside. God wants to reside in a physical world that we have decorated for him, that we have prepared through our doing mitzvahs, through our doing Torah, that reveals God in this world and that creates a dwelling place for Hashem. This is, this is the, the, the home that Hashem desires. Now we know that God can do whatever he wants. He didn't need us to do this. But we also said that Hashem is chesed. God is kindness. And in his kindness, God gave us the opportunity in his vision of this beautiful world, of this wonderful 
palace, this wonderful sanctuary. He says, I trust you. I know that you are going to do a fabulous job. So this is what we're doing here in this world. We're decorating God's sanctuary by learning Torah, by doing mitzvahs. And we the results of our efforts. We don't necessarily realize that with each mitzvah that we are doing, we are bringing more light of godliness into this world. And the more light we push away darkness. So truth, we mention in this pasuk, in this last verse, we said before the Lord, for he has come to judge the earth, he will judge the inhabited world justly. We, we understand them. He will judge the inhabited world justly and the peoples with equity. Now, at the end of Psalm 96, it's Lifne Hashem, Kiva, Kiva Lishpot Haaretz, Yishpot Tebel, but Sedek, but Amim, but Emunasal. Before he has come to judge the world, the earth, he will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. So in chapter 96, about the era of the revelation of Mashiach, we mention that Hashem is going to judge the nations with his truth. And here it says, Ba'amim Bamei Sharim, and the nations with righteousness. So why does this verse over here switch from truth to righteousness? So in the era of Mashiach, Hashem is going to judge the nations of the world for two things, two crimes. Number one, for the oppression of the Jewish people. B'nai Yisrael, from time immemorial, since we became being oppressed by the world at large. Today we call it anti-Semitism, but really it's anti-God. That, that Hashem is going to judge the world for is their rebellion against Hashem. So when it comes to the justice for the sin against oppression and persecution of Bnei Yisrael, of the Jewish nation, then Hashem is going to follow strict justice. He will judge the nations with his truth. But when it comes to the punishment against Hashem himself, he's not going to hold them to such a high standard. In other words, he's not going to punish them according to really what they should be punished. He's going to be much more forgiving and he's going to judge them according to his righteousness. And um, they just teach us and we know as Jews, one of the 13 principles of faith is we believe in the resurrection of the dead. That when Mashiach is going to come, it's going to be a new world. And all the neshamas, all the souls of the righteous, the, all the and, uh, and enjoy this era of Mashiach. So many, many people ask the question, who is going to be resurrected? Who is going to come back in that era of Mashiach? And what's going to happen during that time? And interestingly enough, one of the, uh, one of the down is that any human being, any person in the world that perpetrated evil and didn't receive 
righteousness, meaning didn't receive justice in this world, and justice will be served. Why? Because we need to understand that the true God is a God of justice, and the God of justice that we serve is the God over Olam Hazer. He's the God in this world, and therefore it is paramount that justice be served in this, in this world. And what's even more interesting is that the sages tell us not only will, uh, will the wicked be justice be served, but they are also going to sing praises to Hashem in gratitude. Why? Because when Mashiach is going to come and the whole world is going to that God is one, or Shema Echad, and his name is one, in essence, the biggest pain, the biggest suffering for the human that didn't take the opportunity during these years of exile, during these years of Golas, to recognize Hashem. Moments where we forget, those are the moments where, well, not us, but some people might do things contrary to the will of God. But when, when Mashiach comes, it's going to be a no-brainer. Hashem is going to be right there in front of us. And every single person in the world to be a moment of great truth for every single person. And it's going for the wicked. The most difficult thing for the wicked is that they didn't recognize this on their own. And that they didn't have the opportunity in the service of Hashem and to create a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name during these. And they're going to be full of so much pain at the lost opportunity that when Hashem is going to meet out justice and they will have to pay for the crimes. What crimes? We're talking about the crime of hurting the Jewish nation, but there will be one last opportunity that they have, and that will be to create a Kiddush Hashem, to create a sanctification of God's name through their giving, their just, that is going to be their opportunity to make up for lost time. And for that, they too will thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They too will thank Hashem. And therefore, when it says, by Yom HaHu, on that day of godliness, Yiye Hashem Echad, God will be one, Ushemo Echad, and His name will be one, the entire world, every child, and even those who didn't recognize Hashem during their lifetime, and because of that, acted in an evil way, will sing praises to Hashem, will thank God even for that difficult opportunity that they have to cause a sanctification of Hashem's name. We, the Jewish nation, have nothing to be ashamed of. Have, well, maybe a few things. But surely we that we are still connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu through His Torah. We're still connected to Hashem through His Torah. But most of all, the thing that Hashem wants to see the most and we, is that we are here for each other. And I think I speak not just for myself, but for every single one of us, that we're living in a time where we can really live it. The gift of each and every single one of our brothers and sisters. We are grateful for every single person, more so than we have ever been before. And as we said, that Hashem, the Amin B'mei Sharim, God is goodness. When it comes to the crime against Hashem 
and with truth when it comes to the crime against humanity, this tells us that for Hashem, the greatest, most beautiful decor that we can provide for him in this world is when we care about each other, when we connect to each other, when we show that we miss being together. That to God is the greatest, greatest form of of, of kindness and goodness in this world. So at this time where we are all with pain of what is happening in the world around us, it's, it's, it's just too difficult to even believe something out of a science fiction movie. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's unbelievable. But we have to be positive. We need to... Take out our Tehillim, read these chat our Amuna to strengthen our faith by being active, doing things that show that we have faith. And we all know the expression, fake it till you make it. When it's difficult, just fake it. Put the music on, dance, use those muscles in your face to smile it changes something in your heart. I think, um, let's pause for a moment. Everybody, just look at your screen and smile. Smile. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile. Smile. Yes, we are hard to smile. It's hard to be happy. But when we think about what's waiting for us, when Hashem is going to reveal to the entire world, that is cause for smiling. When we think about the faith that Hashem has in each and every single one of us, when we say the Modet Ani in the morning, God, we open up faith in me. You trust me to be your designer, to be the one to make you comfortable in this world. And every single one of us has untold strength. Every single one of us has unbelievable about goodness in this world. So I want to bless everybody with a good week. This week we're going to usher in the month of Nisan. Um, I want to wish a very long life to all the Bukit family of my blessed and dear mother-in-law, Esther Ziesel, Bas Shalom Yaakov, her neshama should have an aliyah, and um, as we enter the month of Nisan, we should remember Benisan. In the month of Nisan, we, we were redeemed. In the month of Nisan, in the future, we will be redeemed. And may we already have the redemption before Rosh Chodesh Nisan arrives. I want to wish everybody a good week, a good Chodesh. Hang in there. Everybody needs to connect in the way that we're able to connect. Stay away, connect on a soul level. Connect on the telephone, call each other, email each other, text each other, pray for each other. Those who pray for others, God answers their prayers. Shabbat Tov and have a beautiful week.